After watching that documentary, I had to just rip my nose off, get rid of it. It was too risky. No, but seriously, if you're interested in a deep dive on all that, the spillover in two weeks, you should know that I got you by now. I got your nose. Give it back. Give them all back. Story-wise, we're in five orange juicy territory today. One of Ivanka Trump's ex-best friends called her out as a hypocrite, claiming she's had an abortion. Word is that celebrity sisters Hillary and Haley Duff are feuding because one of them is allegedly conservative. And apparently Disney is on their hands and knees begging Johnny Depp to come back now to reprise his role in Pirates of the Caribbean after a disastrous summer at the box office. And even more spicy headlines with Hot Take Tuesday. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Poplitics. Got your nose! Are you familiar with luxury fashion retailer Moda Operandi? It was started in 2010 by a girl named Lauren Santo Domingo who had a very New York gossip girl life. You're kind of not invited. She started at Vogue as a fashion assistant, worked for several fashion designers after that, and then launched Moda Operandi for the richest fashionistas who are willing to put 50% down to get runway fashion before anyone else. I'm telling you this backstory so you understand who she is when I drop this bomb. She was also very close friends with Ivanka Trump in high school. Very juicy stuff. After Roe was overturned over the weekend, Lauren went viral for this tweet, which she now deleted, that says, at Ivanka Trump, you are noticeably quiet today. The high school friends who took you to get an abortion are not. Oh my God, I'm peeing a little bit. I'm peeing a little bit. Here's what I think about this. I could definitely believe Lauren is telling the truth. Maybe Ivanka did get an abortion in high school. It wouldn't shock me. But there are a few things here. One, it is very evil to out someone like that publicly. And two, even if Ivanka had an abortion, that doesn't mean that she's not allowed to become pro-life later in life. In fact, I don't think she considered herself to be pro-life before her dad got elected. Before her dad's first term, she would dodge questions about it. And it wasn't until the election in 2020 that she claimed to be pro <clears throat> Whoops. And it wasn't until the election in 2020 that she claimed to be pro-life and cited becoming a mom as changing her mind. She said, I am also a mother of three children and parenthood affected me in a profound way in terms of how I think about these things. I am pro-life and unapologetically so. Things change, people change. The next juicy feud is between actress sisters Hillary and Haley Duff. Rumor is they are feuding because Haley is conservative and Hillary isn't. What? There has been distance between the two for several months, especially with Haley packing up and moving to Austin, Texas and leaving LA during the pandemic. They've also not been liking each other's posts on social media, no birthday shout outs, no spending holidays together. It definitely seems like they are feuding. And since people are speculating it's about politics, I decided to do a little digging into who Haley follows on social media. Her Twitter is dead. MIA hasn't tweeted in years or liked anything in years, but here's where things get juicy. If I could uh, stick my pretty little nose in here for one second. Haley follows a couple different accounts for President Biden and Congresswoman AOC on Instagram. Seems liberal, right? Ah, but then you look closer and she's also following Candace Owens. Now, if someone is actually a leftist, there is no way they would follow Candace Owens. They wouldn't dare. So my theory is that maybe Haley Duff is conservative, but is following a couple left wingers to throw people off the trail. I think that's a good thing. I said on the show a few weeks back that if Disney wanted to resuscitate their image, all they'd have to do is bring Johnny Depp back on for pirates. At the time, people from the company said that would not happen. However, after their latest box office loss with Lightyear, I think they might be ready to eat some crow. <laughs> According to the New York Post, Disney is trying to win back Johnny with a $301 million deal to return as Jack Sparrow. Now, if you remember, Disney already dumped him like a hot pocket when Amber's allegations first came out. The question is, it is a huge payout. Should Johnny take the money and do it, or flip Disney his own bird? Sticks and stones, love. As if today's stories weren't hot enough, it's about to get sweaty. Hot Tank Tuesday. 
Ben Affleck's 10-year-old son Samuel went with his dad and new stepmom J-Lo to a luxury car dealership over the weekend and decided to get in the driver's seat of a Lamborghini while the adults were talking. That's when he accidentally shifted the car into reverse and it bumped into a white BMW behind it. Everyone was okay and no major damage was done, but I'm sure it's a story they'll laugh about his whole life. My dad accidentally drove my grandma's car into a lake when he was a kid and that's always been a funny story. I wanted to do hood rest stuff for my friend. Authorities released some of the contents from Brian Laundrie's notebook that was found next to his body. He admitted in the writing to killing Gabby Petito in a confession and claimed that Gabby fell and bumped her head while they were crossing a stream and that she was miserable. So he alleged that she wanted out of her misery, so he thought he was helping her and showing mercy by strangling her to death only to regret it and want to kill himself for what he did. The last thing he wrote was that he took his life on purpose where he did so animals would eat him. Even without being shown in China, Top Gun Maverick has now reached one billion dollars worldwide at the box office. This should prove to Hollywood that they don't need to keep bowing to the CCP to include or edit things out of other movies. If the movie is good, it will do well without the communists. <laughs> If you need a break from Roe content, don't forget that my newest interview with Mike Cernovich about what it's like doing psychedelics is out now. Subscribe to The Spillover on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. It is a deep, super fun, and fascinating conversation. Even if you're like me and have never done hallucinogens, please leave your weekly five-star review too so we stay charting. I think you're really gonna like this conversation. If I delivered on my promise to be five orange juicy today, heart or thumbs up this episode, do you think that Haley and Hillary Duff are feuding about politics or something else entirely? And what about Ivanka Trump having an abortion? Completely made up or probably true? And should Johnny Depp take the Disney offer? DM this episode to someone who loves scented plugins and tell them to throw them away because they are completely jacking up their hormones and fertility. And then hit the save button, please, to help us out. Politics is back tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. It's pop culture without the propaganda every single day. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Politics. Clearly, Poplitics is best served visually, but you can also listen to Poplitics if you just want the audio. Subscribe to us anywhere you get your podcasts. Apple, Spotify, iHeart, TuneIn, and more. Also, make sure that if you are listening to the podcast version, you leave us a five-star review. And don't forget, subscribe to Poplitics on YouTube.